Hi guys, welcome back to Bride Society. Today, um, as you can maybe see from the background, we're somewhere slightly different, um, and that's because I have a kind of new guest host today. Laura's looking a little different. <laughs> Hi everyone. <laughs> uh, so this is Anna, and she's here to help me do a video on the differences between British weddings and North American weddings, because I tend to find people are quite curious about what happens to the other side of the pond. Definitely curious. <laughs> <laughs> so, as you may pick up from Anna's accent in a moment, uh, she is from North America, and obviously I'm British. Um, so, yeah, so well, tell them who you are. <laughs> as Becky said, my name is Anna Rancourt, and I am a part-time photographer here in Toronto and Hamilton. Um, I do mostly weddings, but also a variety of other types of photo shoots, um, engagements, boudoir, uh, family pictures, portraits, all that good stuff. Um, my company name is Anna Rancourt Photography and I've been doing that for approximately eight years um, and I still love it. It's a great income on the side for my other job and uh, I'm just fascinated by everything that has to do with weddings. So happy to be here and discussing that with you guys today. Um, so we'll just get right into it and yeah. uh, get to the first difference, I guess. Um, so typically for North American weddings, we would start with an engagement party. Um, I've been told that that's not something that's too uh, common yeah, in the UK. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we have them. I've been to two maybe, but yeah, it's not, not common. Not probably common. saving our money. <laughs> right, exactly. Well, basically the whole point of them is to get money, I would say. Um, so typically bride and groom would get engaged and follow up with their guests um, that they're planning on inviting to the wedding with a celebration of their engagement. So they would invite um, friends, family uh, to a venue of their choice and kind of celebrate the fact that they've gotten engaged. Usually that leads to um, a lot of presents and uh, thank you cards and congratulation cards and things like that. So um, that is one thing that we definitely do here. So you get um, you get presents at the engagement party as well? Oh yes. Okay. Yeah, no. Presents all the time. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, even the engagement parties I've been to in the UK, there are not presents. Maybe no presents. a card. There's, there's always a but good, like, what a good opportunity get? for like, presents. What would you get that you don't then give them like at the wedding? Like, I know it's, it's kind of you wonder what, what to give somebody at an engagement party. I guess you could give them something that they'll be able to use for the bridal shower, um, which is also something. Yeah, that which is also have, something we don't have. <laughs> that apparently you guys don't do. Um, and usually the bridal shower is a good opportunity for the women that are going to be involved in the wedding to get together and start planning things, um, including the bachelorette party and just helping the bride get settled into her role as planner and um, hopefully not bridezilla. Um, <laughs> but it's, uh, it's just a nice gathering for everybody to um, meet one another and see who they're going to be working with for the next uh, many months before the wedding. Um, but there's definitely presence all throughout uh, all these events. <laughs> so there are more presents at the bridal shower. There are, yes. Um, and these presents would be geared more towards the actual bride. Um, maybe like makeup, like special makeup yeah, or perfume makeup, or... Uh, like a wedding planner guide, something to... Right. Like a little agenda that the girl can keep all her information in. Um, or like a and nail salon vouch, that kind definitely, of thing. Definitely, yes. Okay. Yeah, so all these things that aren't geared towards the groom or the couple as a unit, but really just to spoil her and congratulate her. So does the groom have an equivalent at um, that point? No, not at that point. There's no, so there's no bridal like shower. Reinforces for men. the idea that it's all about the bride. <laughs> Definitely, and I am all about that. <laughs> yes. Love it. <laughs> yeah, um, but it's also a good opportunity to invite some of the girls that you may or may not think uh, will be part of your bridal party. You can have them at the bridal shower, um, and and also in include some of the family members, like your mother, the mother of the groom, uh, cousins, and aunts that won't necessarily be part of the bachelorette party. Okay, so so it's a much wider scope, like it's a bigger... Bigger guest invite. list. Okay. Yes, but still only women. Still only women, okay. Yes. Yeah. For some reason, I, I'd imagined it would be the other way around. I don't know why. Nope, well, they, like they narrow things down a little bit for the bachelorette, the bachelorette party, and then it's a little bit more exclusive in that okay. sense. What about... And what, you call that a bachelorette and a bachelor, like, party? Yeah. Or, like, you have other names, right? Like, a, for them? Um, like, is there a, 
stag and doe or something? No, the, well, the stag and doe is different. From the bachelor. <laughs> From bachelor. the bachelor and bachelorette party. Okay, I know, I'm totally <laughs> You're lost, lost. uh-oh. Um, <laughs> okay, so <laughs> for the North American views, we literally only have, like, uh, <laughs> hen and stag do, so like a hen do for the women and stag do for the guys. Right. Which, like, traditionally would be, like, the night before the wedding, but, like, now it's, like, maybe a few weeks before. But that, right. that's all we do. That's We do nothing for the wedding until then. That's the only celebration that leads up to the, yeah. the big party. <laughs> I feel like we're pretty lazy right now in the UK. <laughs> well, um, there's, there's a whole bunch of different ways that you can celebrate and plan for your wedding. I guess the... Uh, stag and doe is something that people have come up with in North America to help couples come up with the money to pay for a very large celebration like a wedding. Um, and it actually involves um, tickets and vouchers that will let you kind of join into raffles for prizes that a couple would have gone out of their way to obtain from various establishments like restaurants, okay. like you said, nail salons, things like that. So there's prizes involved and it, it, uh, brings out people from all over the place, even friends of friends that the bride and groom may never have met, uh, will come to this party nice. and uh, participate in the games that are involved there and all the, the prizes that are uh, there to be won. And that will help them pay for their wedding. So any opportunity I think we're missing to, out. Yes. <laughs> I think it's yes. definite things that we can take here from, yes. from them. Well, you just start realizing that your friends and family have so much to give and that you can really get them involved in, in a whole bunch of different ways without just having them there for that day. Mm. Um, so. I, was, I remember when, when we got married that my husband said like he was surprised by how much everybody seems to love a good wedding like how enthusiastic everybody is about being a part of it and right. about it and things and i guess it's probably even more so here because there's so much more involvement for everybody and yes and every step of the and... way with every event be it the engagement party the bridal shower and then the stag and doe it's just um which is basically like a fundraiser i would i would dub it fundraiser <laughs> um but then the the real fun happens when you start planning your bachelorette party. I would I would think. Okay. And what do the guys do at the what? It's a stag party. The stag do. Yeah, they just you know get drunk. It's just not, for either party really. It just tends to be a night out, like in a major city within the UK, <laughs> like so, like Newcastle or Ooh. London or, or York, that kind of thing. Like, we just go out drinking, usually dressed up. All right. Like, it's themes really are tacky. Themes or... <sighs> well, no, for like the, the bride, she usually ends up like, you know, with like a feather boa and like, like those bobbly things. Something that and, clearly identifies her as the bride. And a, yeah, a sash <laughs> and that kind of thing. Like, maybe like tutus, that kind of okay stuff like yeah. usually some like gaudy color like mm, yes. bright pink or something like neon <laughs> something embarrassing yeah <laughs> that kind of thing and there are occasionally like themes you know like disney or whatever but okay like that kind of thing but would you ever it's usually a lot of like of phallic be... things around but like Right. Like things shaped like things and stuff. Okay. So that's still usually a and part silly of silly to-do lists and, and just funny funny games throughout the night or um so yeah, there might be games. So uh, there has been a slight more shift towards uh, like maybe having like a bit of a party at home first or like or for the women like sometimes now it's like afternoon tea and things. So there are more civilized oh, that's very nice. versions. <laughs> yeah, I didn't have a wild night out or anything. No, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so there are more more civilized um versions of it that's right well but yeah but there's no gifts no gifts there's no gifts i don't like, i wouldn't just... think that the bachelorette party is is a gift giving event. okay that's why we draw the line <laughs> yes they can become pretty costly when the when the maid of honor gets ideas like let's go to vegas or let's mm. plan a big party in nashville and then people are having to pay for flights and hotels and yeah that whole yeah thing. weekends are of becoming a thing back home like right for that uh, I've, yeah. I've been on a few with people. Yeah, same. So, and like it, Paris, it ends up like, being but it quite expensive. Europe, right? so, like, so it's like Paris, like Milan, Barcelona, that kind of oh, that's thing. Because obviously we're much closer yes. to that. Well, that would be that would be a very exciting bachelor <laughs> yeah, for, for someone from all the way over here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And then um, from that point on, the rest of the planning uh, is almost done and the actual wedding happens. Is that correct? 
Uh, yeah, it's yeah, it's basically just the next thing. Yeah, right. yeah, we just are at the wedding is our mm. next thing. But you have like rehearsals and stuff, right? Yes. Well, we like to be very prepared. For that's fair. I think that's more logical. <laughs> so we definitely want to get everybody together who's going to be involved in the ceremony, and we do that uh, either the night before or a couple of night nights before, depending oh, okay. on the venue availability. Um, it's typically, traditionally hosted by the bride's family. Okay. So, and like this is purely based on like films that yes. I've watched. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but then like other speeches then as well. Like, yes. <laughs> Actually, there are. I don't know what they have to say when they get to the wedding because they've just said it they're all. Said and it all. They, they, gave, they gave all the gifts. <laughs> so yeah, I say we have no rehearsal dinner and as we'll, we'll talk a bit more about like speeches and things in a minute. But like... Yeah, my impression is just basically that North Americans like to speak a lot more than we, we do. do. That's our <laughs> stiff upper lip thing, maybe. Like, we Possibly. just say as little as possible. It's just a good trial run for the wedding, maybe. Break it's them in, good get, practice. Get, get the nerves yes. out. And then get a sense for what the bride and groom are comfortable with. We're, we're, <laughs> oh, yeah, which what lines you you're push. able to cross and which ones you should. <laughs> yeah, which jokes tank. And... Right. But also, just maybe if you don't want to bore your guests with too many speeches on the day of. It's uh, nice to have other people giving speeches at your rehearsal dinner. Uh, okay. And it can just sort of be anyone? Anyone can just be like, I'm going to speak now. Yes, and... I would think so. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So just a little different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I totally think we're missing out. This is the... <laughs> there's, yes, there's we lots of fun to do people. We, we've got to make this video go viral and get it to catch on That's in right. the UK. That's right. What time do, do weddings typically happen in the UK? So like late morning, early afternoon. So like really? 11 a.m. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that would be extreme. Yeah, like 11 a.m. to 1, 2, two at a push, oh. I'd say. Well, we're still getting our hair and nails done at that point. <laughs> Nothing has happened at that point. <laughs> we get, I think we get ready uh, in the early morning, but the ceremonies typically don't happen until three or four, I think. Yeah. yeah. Plenty of time. That's right. Sexual. That's right. Take photos. <laughs> yes. All that good stuff. Mm. But I think, like, again, based on my movie knowledge, which is clearly the source of all Very good knowledge. Very extensive knowledge, I <laughs> <you> see. <laughs> I'm good with like girly wedding yeah. Um, is that like I think your bridal like your wedding parties are much bigger like so we only have like so in terms of the women like mm -hmm. we would just have like a maid of honour and like one or two bridesmaids so I guess like in terms of the number of people to get ready in the right. morning there's not I guess as many people so I guess you don't need as long a That's time fair. frame in the morning so I, you can just get on with it from my experience with Doing the photography, I usually am asked to show up at eight or eight or nine a.m., and that's when mm. the hair and makeup is fully underway. Um, and that's mm. expected that your bride, your bridesmaids, would be um, paying for that on that morning. Um, okay. And because there usually are so many bridesmaids, typically the bride would not be compensating them for their dresses or the hair and makeup that they would right. be wearing that day because it ends up being so many people. And the the bridal parties are quite large, I would say, in North America compared yeah, so to what that you're... bill would be massive. Yeah, exactly. So it's it's a lot on the people that are involved in the wedding to be paying for their own things. Yeah. Um, but it is yeah. because they're quite larger, and I I've regularly seen um, the maid of honor and then five bridesmaids is, is mm -hmm. probably a good amount and that's just to even things out in pictures which is really nice for me because you don't want to have three and two it's always nice to have three and three on either side which um, is which is really good no, um, yeah, that's cool. yeah no the, the bride and groom would normally put the bill for it. it's not unheard of for like a bridesmaid to pay for their own dresses but yeah i think we would honestly we'd probably consider it kind of rude if like really the bride was like be my bridesmaid, but you pay. Like, you pay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we're just okay with being rude. <laughs> but it is, but say like the, the numbers of people just make exactly. Yeah, you yeah, know, that makes sense. it does happen, obviously, from time to time. But yeah, yeah, and I know we were saying about like rehearsals and things. So yes. I should say, like, we do have like a ceremony rehearsal, but only if it's in a church. Okay. So like, if you're having like a civil ceremony, you you get nothing, you have to just like rock up on the day and hope for the best. Right. And you won't have met like your registrar before the ceremony. Like you don't get to choose who Mary's marries you. you. Really? Yeah. So oh. you just get who you're given and that's 
that's it. I mean, obviously, like, if it's in a church and you know the vicar or the priest or whatever, obviously you've probably met them before, but again, you've not got a choice, it's so whoever's church it is, right? It seems <laughs> like it's very, very strict over there, so you can you just get married anywhere, or...? No, no. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know. Again, it's like you watch movies and they're all like married on a beach or in on a backyard, mountain or yes. in the woods and all this kind. Of, yeah, in your parents' backyard. Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> it has to be like a licensed, like pre-approved, like venue. So okay. it has to be like a permanent structure, and so it has to be licensed by the local council. And right. yeah, so it's all kind of. Yeah, restrictions and stuff. And then if you want to have a ceremony in those in those types of places, you are assigned someone that will marry you. Is that correct? Yeah, so you... Yeah, so if it's not a religious one, so it's just in a, a sort of a hotel or a barn or whatever and it has a license, um, the person doesn't come with the venue. It's like the local council will have registrars. And so it's just someone from the council, okay. like a registrar that will come out and you have to pay for them to come out and... Huh. And do it as well as their fee. But, Interesting. Yeah. Well, we and actually. Then it's, I was just gonna say, and then yeah, we had another weird thing is that like <laughs> the venue as well, like isn't it allowed to like serve any food or drink like for an on in that area for like an hour before and during the ceremony. What? I'm like, maybe they just don't want people drunk when they're getting married, <laughs> so they can't be like. Like, oh, I didn't want to marry them. I needed, like, you to, like, null the, the wedding because I was drunk and didn't know what I was doing. So it's just to prevent those kind of mishaps, maybe. Well, that's my <laughs> assumption, but, it's yeah, they so can't have, like, oh, the we Vegas eat and chapel drink the thing. whole time. <laughs> From 9 a.m. until the end of the night, we are drinking and eating. <laughs> I said, I went to an outdoor wedding in Washington once, and, like, but it yes. was quite cold on the day, and, like, they had, like, teas and stuff, so they're, like holding tea like and I thought that was really nice like you said just is, like yeah. one way you wait for the bride to come in I thought that was a great idea but oh that won't happen in England people apparently not no. not no. even tea not, <laughs> not even not tea, even tea. <laughs> <laughs> you would think of all things they might be like we'll let tea happen yes, we'll an exception tea. made yeah. for tea <laughs> that's so funny <laughs> um well in North America for as far as I know mm. you are free to marry anywhere you'd like um licensed or not so long as you have the proper officiant for the ceremony. And from what I understand, there's actually a uh, officiant website where you can actually select your officiant and have them be the person that marries you. That makes sense. Possibly. Like, we thought that was gonna happen, yeah. like, that we get to choose and meet them and check they have some you kind of so. like stage presence. Yeah, like, following the thing, yes. but no. Well, from what I understand, it's like a dating website, <laughs> but for officiants. <laughs> And you put in your preferences and your, you know, if you have a religious preference or if you want somebody that's male versus female, you can put all that in and then it'll single out your, your top picks and then you can meet with them and interview them and see if you really click and then have them marry you in the location of your choice with food and drink available. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's definitely a bit different, but there's yeah. something to be said about having that traditional vibe and being in a church where you've grown up and you mm -hmm. have that attachment to it or you you really have always wanted to get married in that specific place and yeah um, doing things a little bit more by the book as opposed to just a free-for-all of <laughs> what the bride did whatever the bride but desires the thing, well, the thing is, but I think like as couples you can have like a place that's quite meaningful to the two of you mm -hmm. but and then so you might want to get married there but like you like in that unless backyard, it for example. <laughs> I think so, unless it conveniently happens to be a licensed hotel, like... That's right, gonna... you're a bit restricted yeah. in that sense. And, and even then, if you... So even if you're having, like, a church wedding, you can't just get married in any church. You have to have, like, some kind of affiliation to it. So either okay. you grew up in that area, or mm. your parents live in that area, or or the church in the parish that you are now right. living in. There has to be some kind of connection as you'll know if you've watched this channel for like we're big on like the idea of making weddings very personal and it being yes. a reflection of the couple and so it has meaning and so you're not just that some cookie cutter could be yeah. anyone so like you want to feel like mm -hmm. you're at that couple's wedding and I think like your way of doing that lends right. itself much better to that kind of mm -hmm. like ethos about it right like, I guess those rules are hard to change when it's controlled by the government, government. <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> the choice to walk down the aisle for the first time and see your bride versus having a first look at another venue or on site so this is like 
I've started to see this like online a bit. So this is like a photography, yes. like, well, not just a photography opportunity, but like it's a special moment between like the bride and groom, yes. like away from everybody else. Exactly. Because this actually, is something we don't know about. Even away from the bridal party, a lot of the times okay. they'll, they'll really say that they don't want anybody else to be there so they can experience the moment. And so this has been um, quite popular in North America where the bride and groom will choose whether they want to get married and have the first look be when the bride walks down the aisle. But a lot of them uh, want to have that moment for themselves, mm -hmm. I guess. Um, and will have written vows that they will experience together in a different location away from the guests and uh, say their vows to one another in private. Um, obviously the photographer and videographers want to be right in there and see everything so that they can yeah. report on it later on. But it is kind of a nice moment between the bride and groom to, uh, to experience and have emotions when maybe a groom wouldn't feel comfortable crying at a ceremony. They may feel more comfortable and vulnerable mm -hmm. to let those emotions flow in private. So That's it's definitely growing on us here in North right. America. That It's something that I've seen more and more, but it is. I feel like that's something that will catch on eventually probably and that's the thing i know she was saying like that she's like the last thing mm -hmm. to come in and again this is something that i think growing up like i always expected it to be this way because we always have american movies yes, right about right. weddings so then when i started to like look into like getting married myself or like go to other people's weddings when i was a bit older i was always surprised by this but in the uk like the bride comes in first so like your groom and like ushers and things will already and best man will already be in and like stood at the front mm -hmm. like waiting but yeah the bridal party like the women like so you the bridal come in first and the bridesmaids okay. just like hanging out behind oh. <laughs> like no one really sees you <laughs> like, but you've put in all that effort I to know. look pretty and, <laughs> and I get, you just walk in to the game you sit down and job done like really? that's it okay there's a lot of questions here that I have so first of all what is an usher Oh, okay. you not have ushers? <laughs> no. Okay, so ushers uh, are kind of like, so you're not the best man, but you're still part of the bridal party for the guy. So like right. they're men. Right. Um, and you usually have like two, I'd say. Okay. And they're just there to like usher people to their seats. Oh, like the so It's quite the a welcoming. literal Okay. Usher. Like you're ushering them. So not like shove. But, but they're still so, groomsmen. So, well... So yeah, you they would be the groomsmen, but they are ushers. Okay. For us, so they're there to like when people arrive, say hello, and to sort of welcome them, and to say like you sit beside the side or sit anywhere. Here's an order of service. Like they fill that kind of function. So then the the bride walks in first. Yeah. And then you said that they go up and they then the bridesmaids go up and sit down. Now what yeah. is the sitting so down like, business? <laughs> Maybe we just want to chill Sit down. out. <laughs> we really don't want to show them at all. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe the bride's just really obsessed with like no one showing her up and taking away Possibly. the thunder. Maybe that's what Possibly. it is. <laughs> but so then nobody is standing up at the front with the bride and groom. Is that correct? I think the the best man, I think, stands up for a little while because he's got the rings. So okay. until like that function has been... Served. like yes he might be around but then yeah no everyone's just and the so you have like reserved seats at the front okay like for them to sit down in but yeah okay. so yeah she take the maid of honor would take the bouquet and then sit down and then it's very different yeah. typically for us the groomsmen and bridesmaid would be paired up together as a couple and they would open the i guess the, per, the procession procession yeah um and then it so would it helps have even with, numbers, I guess. Yes, it is <laughs> not just for photography purposes. <laughs> exactly, and usually then the, the maid of honor is paired with the best man, and yeah, they are sense. followed by the bride and her father, or bride and her parents. Yeah. See, from yeah. the movies, this is what I thought it would be. But yes. No. Well, I guess you can. I mean, always, you can change it. You like can churches are more restrictive, it. but like I think. But yes. We're stopping you there, guys, because. Once Anna and I got talking, we realised there's actually quite a lot of differences between North American and British weddings. And so you don't fall asleep watching us and in the hope that you keep finding it interesting, we decided to split it into two parts. So we're going to leave it there for today, but you can catch the other part, I think in about two weeks time. When that comes up, I'll post a link to it below as well, in case you're watching this and wondering where it is. 
Um, but we hope you check that out and that you're enjoying what you've seen so far. If you've got any questions or you're wondering what's coming up, do ask. And please remember to hit subscribe and hit the little bell as well because then you'll definitely get notified when the following part two video goes live.